It's your girl, Claudia Jordan. I am back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. Now sit back, relax, and get ready to sip on this hot tea. What's up, Al? And what's up, Bunky? What's going on, Claudia? How you oh, doing? Happy Monday, hey, y'all. There's the hand. <laughs> what's wrong, Funky? You look stank today. Uh, I what's look going on with you? Roll hard and put away wet. When I tell you I have been partying and drinking and hanging out since Wednesday, and my body just ain't got nothing left. <laughs> Welcome back, Funky. When we were doing the check in, this was. Funky was like, this is the time we check. I was like, it's I've been mudded out this weekend, honey. I got, I got to sit down the rest of the week. I'm I'm not young like I used to be. Uh, to hell with being young and supple. I'm old. <laughs> Finally, the truth comes out. Al, right. how was your weekend? Oh, it was it was pretty uneventful. I caught up on a lot of rest because you know I'm trying to fight this this head cold or sinus, whatever it is I've developed since moving to LA. But but, 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 good news, Claudia, I followed your advice and I met with the family, the wine family in California, mm -hmm. here in California, and we're going to see what we can develop for my incredible buttery Chardonnay line. So let's keep good. our fingers crossed. All right. Good for you. That, well. that makes a lot of sense. Well, my mom came to town, so it was a really small Thanksgiving uh, gathering. And, we, you know, she got to see the house. It was good times. And uh, she got to criticize me from head to toe like usual. So that was fun. Um, <laughs> well, that's what mothers do, my right? Mother, oh, my God, though. It's so much, though. Like, I, 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 I everything. It's, it's, you need to get your thyroid checked. It's so swollen under your face. It looks like you had a double chin. I'm like, I got it from you. It's hereditary. Uh, is she like, still there now? Is that your... No, she left. She's gone. I'm in New York right now. I'm doing The Breakfast Club. I did it today with Buster Rhymes, and he dropped his new album, and then I'll be back tomorrow. And then flying to L.A., so I'll be in L.A. for a few days out there working on a film. So I'll, I'll hit you up when I get out there, Al, if you're feeling okay. better. Sounds before, good. But all right. Before we get started, the Breakfast Club, they haven't permanently filled that Angela Yee seat yet. They're just doing a rotating host thing. Yeah. Mm. I don't know what's happening with that. Um, it's been a long, it's been almost a year. Is that just what it's going to be? I don't know. Like, they're pretty, like, tight-lipped about it, you know? So, well, well, I, I just don't know what. It seems, I guess it seems to be working for them. That's why I asked. So well, what they save a lot of money what do you think is going yeah. on with DJ Envy? I saw that. Did y'all read that new article that came out in New York Magazine? It was very detailed. They even brought in a criminologist to examine the words that they used in the complaint, that the prosecutor had used in the complaint. Did you guys read about that? Also, oh, what I'm hearing Sure is did not, and I'll be on the breakfast I was going to say, what I'm hearing is it might not even be no more Breakfast Club. So <laughs> <laughs> I just want to stay over here with us. <laughs> Anyways, that's not in the script for tonight, and I'm going to go back to the premise of tomorrow, so don't be messing up my thing. We'll talk about that another time. All right, let's All let's right. get into the topics. Um, it seems like the Smiths were all smiles on Thanksgiving after Jada posted a photo of the family with the caption, a perfect Thanksgiving day. What do you guys think, and are you hoping to see more or less of them in the new year? Uh, Q, let's go to you first on this one. You know, I have never met a person who can single-handedly just make the whole world not like their whole family. Like I just, and, and I was, before the show started, I was sitting here like, why do I have an attitude about this picture? And I think the greatest thing I can come up with is we've just been overexposed when it comes to the Smiths. We know too much of their business, but at the same time, we know not enough of their business for the things that they want to talk about and not want to talk about. We don't care anymore. The fantasy, the fairy tale has been ruined. And we just wish y'all would go sit y'all ass down somewhere. All right. Al? Al? Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think I would need to see less of them. I think that entire family, because of all they've been through, Will's book, Jada's book, 
Will's exposure of sleeping with men, Jada's exposure of sleeping with women. I just think it's really creating a lot of, of distance between us and her, the fans that have really been there for them a long time. And putting pictures out like this to me is almost a slap in the face. If you could pretend like you have pretended for the last 20 years, I mean, for 20 years, then how can you not pretend that you're happy on Thanksgiving Day? So my whole thing is kind of like you. We don't know what's real and what's not real with this family anymore. And we need they need to rebuild their trust with us. So I say go away for a little while. You have plenty of money. You all are super successful. Go away for a little while and then regain our trust again before you start posting happy, happy uh, Thanksgiving Day pictures. Because, I mean, is it for Hollywood? Is it real or is it not? We'll never know, will we? Well, since Jada talking about suing everybody, let's go ahead and say allegedly for Jada and allegedly for Will because <clears throat> she's out here trying to sue these people. I am so, I, you know how I feel about this. I'm very sick of it. I, I love them more when there was some mystery about them and I am tired. I'm tired of covering them. And it's like, you can't really have it both ways. If you want to write a tell-all book, you have to accept the criticism that comes with it and you're going to tell it, tell it all. Um, We've been overexposed. And this image looks so fake, considering what we just right. Well, know we that read. They Precious B yeah. got it right. Go on to the next thing, Claudia. <laughs> oh, <that's good. laughs> All right, Look we have back. a few more updates from our previous reports surrounding Diddy's sexual assault lawsuit. In addition to Cassie's lawsuit, Diddy has been hit with two more sexual assault lawsuits. The second woman alleges that he drugged and assaulted her in 1991 while they were dining at a restaurant. And the third woman claimed that Diddy and R&B singer Aaron Hall assaulted her and her friend in the early 90s. What are your thoughts on this update? And do you think more allegations will start to unfold? Let's go to you first, Al. What do you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm pretty positive more will unfold for sure. Whether we hear about them or not, I mean, it's it's clear that whether it's a money play or not at this point, Diddy, there's something in the milk ain't clean. No, let me rephrase that. Something in this milk is filthy. And this is what I do want to say, because all of this is all of this is alleged, right? If Diddy is guilty of these heinous crimes, I think the only appropriate way for it to be dealt with is you pay the time for the crime. Like if it is a money play and everybody's making this up, then you have to deal with that as well because you made this decision to handle the Cassie situation the way you did. And, and I would think that that would empower a lot of other people to come forward, whether it's true or not, to get to expose you as well. So that's why I say there are definitely more to come, whether we hear about them or not. But I do say this, if he did all that these young ladies are saying that he raped both of them and another young lady said that he raped them, I think if he has done the crime, then he needs to pay the time. Thank you, what do you think? It's a wrap for Diddy. You know, me and a friend were having a conversation this weekend talking about it. It it, it just literally is a wrap for him. I don't know what A-list celebrity producer or executive would be caught in a picture with Diddy at this point. He is considered, as far as we're concerned, a bona fide rapist. You know what I'm saying? Which is unfortunate. And it looks as if, you know, the empire that he built it's starting to, it ain't starting to slowly crumble. It's damn crumbling. And like Al said, there probably would be, you know, more women coming forth. And um, I'm disappointed. Uh, I'm uh, Diddy, you really kind of let us down. You were my childhood. You know, more money, more problems came out when I was in the seventh grade. You know, we we looked up to you as much as you've done for hip hop and, and, and as many artists as you develop and then to find out now that one of your childhood, you know, idols for lack of a better term turns out to be this person. It's just, it's disappointing and it's heartbreaking. You know, there's a lot of people that the first thing they criticize is why wait till now? And it was 1991. I'm sorry. If we can still be mad at the little heifer that got em Emmett Teal murdered, we can still be mad at this. And it hits different when it's you or your family member. I get it. It's annoying to us, but to a victim, it doesn't go away. And um, I'm going to say this about Diddy. Um, we all know there's been whispers in the industry for a very, very, very long time. And they have been around since the 90s. The problem is he was at the peak of his power um, in the 90s and the 2000s. And I think that people, it was, it was so hard to get any traction. And if you really go after and, and look at, you know, 
the complaint uh, with Cassie, you under, you get a little deeper understanding about how he had this entire network that was loyal to him. So it's like, she, this is someone that has some access, some power, some, you know, she's a celebrity. Imagine the average person that had an issue that, you know, feels a little bit helpless, like their hands are tied. And this is the first time, it's like the perfect storm, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone is starting to like collaborate with each other's stories Mm -hmm. And it's really got a lot of steam. Like people, you heard Jaguar right before do a report. Mm -hmm. People deemed her crazy. Kim Porter tried to write a book. Eh, you know, Kamora Lee Simmons dropped some hints here. Uh, there's been a lot of people have dropped things here and there, but never everyone at the same time where they're supporting each other's claims. So I think for that reason, I think you're right, both of you. I definitely think it's a wrap for him. And it's not going to be long before more brands don't want to do business with him. And could you imagine, like, who wants to work for Diddy now, you know? Mm. All right, moving on. While we're on the topic, the subject of sexual assault lawsuits, we have a few more cases to add to the equation. As of now, Jamie Foxx, co-founder of Inter Jamie Foxx and the co-founder of Interscope Records, Jimmy Iovine, uh, former ESPN host and NFL player Marcellus Wiley, Cuba Gooding Jr., former president of Bad Boy Entertainment, Harvey Pierre, and New York Mayor Eric Adams are all facing sexual assault lawsuits. Um, it's been quite, I would say the week, but this, the month, the 2023 was giving. <laughs> if you got a hot topic show, you was busy this year. No, that's okay, right. let's go back to you. What are your thoughts on all these, these chart, these cases coming out? People you you know, coming from? All these cases, you know, on on one token, you want to be like, now, wait a minute, all these damn cases can't be true. Claudia, at this point, I am so scared to be in an elevator alone with a woman. <laughs> I don't even like Tussie Cat. Okay? But I, I do not want to be alone in any space with any damn woman. No, this, this, is, this is sad. You know, again, the Me Too, mo the Me Too movement, taught me that I'm not supposed to second guess a woman when she says she's been assaulted because that re-traumatizes her. So I'm just going to rock with it. But I mean, shit, child, it seemed like everybody is on the damn list this month. Al, what do you think? Well, <clears throat> we just know that there's some big names on the list, too. We learned from the press that 2,500 lawsuits of this type were filed under this new Adult Survivors Act. So it, it's it's we just happen to have 10 people that we say their name and it resonates with the community. Um, and I think I may have mentioned on this show before that someone wrote in the Washington Post that this is the beginning of the hip hop to hip hop Me Too movement. And that's what it's starting to look like. And that's what it's starting to look like. I mean, sound like. And Q, you're right. We have to stand. We have to stand with the victims until we know otherwise. So in this case, unfortunately, there are actors on their list. There's, there's politicians on that list that I have seen their careers grow and flourish if they are at any point a a molester or a violator of someone's human rights by raping them or sexually abusing them then they need to be sent through the criminal justice system and they need to be punished that i will always support and the reason why people take a long time q you ask that question is because obviously the reason why the adult survivors act was created was because people that psychologists say that people take a very long time to process abuse and rape, sexual assault or abuse and rape. And it could be 10 years, it could be 20 years before they can come to terms. And I really think Cassie, for a lot of women, have empowered them to say, hey, if she can have the power, the confidence and the courage to go up against someone like P. Diddy, a billionaire, a hip hop icon, then I can now come forward for all the wrongdoing that was done towards me. You know, um, I, again, I've spoken about going through this a couple of times. I've had a couple of sexual assault um, instances. And one time, one of my friends took it all the way. And I remember being happy for her that she did it, but sad for myself. Like, why couldn't I do it for myself? You know, and like, I, I'm mad at myself to this day. Like, why didn't I do it? Why didn't I do it? And then feeling guilty because so much time has gone by. It's like pointless. I feel like it's pointless now. I just deal with the trauma in my own way. But 
you know, I can speak to the mentality of the victims, you know, like I'm, I, I wish I had the courage that some of these women have. And yeah, we can say there's always going to be a few bad apples in the bunch that are going to look up for a come up. But let me tell you something. This is such a hard thing to relive and to prove if you're lying, then it's, it's going to be obvious. Like, you not. It, it's very hard to, you know, to get to pull this off um, and to subject yourself to that. My friend who took her um, abuser all the way, she had to provide evidence, embarrassing things, sexual history, her underwear on display. It's a very humili humiliating thing to go through if you don't truly believe in it, you know? And I hope they weed out the false ones, but I feel like this whole, it's a money grab thing mm, for a couple, but I think the majority of them have legitimate cases because, and real quick, our society, our world has been such savages towards women for so long. And it's only been as of late that things have been cleaning up. But it used to be, it, it, you'd watch television in the 70s and 80s and people would make jokes about having to give their wife a, you know, get them together, give them a black eye or smack them or, and it was like, no one even bad or not. We've evolved from that. So now this is, this is the reckoning now, I think. So, mm. all right. Coming up, coming up next, find out what we would do in sticky situations. And later, is Tiffany Haddish facing another DUI charge? Oh, wow. Stick around. We'll be right back. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear. To jog where we please. To wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. You're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. What do you think the most bougie state in the United States is? Is this black bougie or white bougie? <laughs> There's a difference. McMillan and Mara. I'm not black bougie. I'm trying to be. <laughs> You're just bougie. I'm just too poor. <laughs> Every Thursday. Listen, if I had more money, I would be so bougie. You black bougie adjacent. All your friends are black bougie. Exactly. <laughs> On Fox Soul. I'm in the same boat. I'm living, I'm living vicariously through them. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Welcome back to TGIF. Soulmates, have y'all ever thought about how you would handle yourself if you were placed in the middle of an unexpected situation? Well, we'd like for you to chime in on our fun segment with hashtag, what would you do? All right, Shannon Sharp recently shared that he would put his dogs before any woman he's dating or smashing. Shannon said, they live here. You're visiting. All right, y'all. What would you do if someone you're dating puts their pets before you? Q, you have a, well, you, you're you a dog um, owner sometimes. Like you have a dog. What do you think about this? What would you do? And do you put your pets before your lovers? Yeah, you're you're me. Me. It's, it's so funny because the question I wasn't I wasn't prepared for that question that said, what would you do if someone you're dating put their dog before you? And that's the exact situation I'm in right now. Uh, but yeah, but you know what? I'm the same way. I, like if, if we come in over here to hunch, if you don't like dogs, you can't come over here. 
My dogs sleep in the bed with me. Um, so there's to be no kicking your legs or acting annoyed if the dog is shifting around. It's just part of the setup over here. And like Shannon said, they live here. You're just visiting. And, and I'm the same way with people. Like my aunt can't come to my house because she don't like dogs. And so she always comes over and has an attitude. And so I'm like, can you put the dogs away? Actually, I can't. No, I can't. <laughs> Al, what do you think? Oh, I think for me, I would just invite them over to my place. If I had a huge problem with the dogs, I would invite them over to my place. I mean, because I mean, a, pets are really important to a lot of people, and I can understand that. I mean, we all know that Shannon Sharp is a super pet lover. He paid ten thousand dollars, I think, is reported for one of his dogs. So we know he's very serious about his 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 pet situation in his house. <laughs> we got some funny comments. Of... Trina 05 said, and that's why Shannon Sharp is not married. <laughs> Ops 88 said, the more Shannon talks, the more unattractive he is. And the comment from Mitchell Wade, is it me or has Shannon been talking a lot about his sexual past since the gay allegation? Oh, damn. Listen. That's true. That I thought was tone deaf with this with this comment. Like you're in the middle of a media cycle with your stylist. I don't think this was the smartest thing to say. It just didn't come out right. It just didn't. The timing was wrong on that comment. For real, Claudia. Come on. Let's not be too nice to people tonight because we we running some railroad tracks tonight. But that did not come across good at all. You know what? But F it. He already <laughs> blocked me. I'm going to talk about this. Shannon, like you went from being very attractive and interesting and like Uncle Shay Shay, where we like, yo, I rock with what he's saying. But the last few months has been a lot of weird little things that is coming up. I think podcasts ain't for everybody. Some people, <laughs> the more they are on podcasts, the more, the more they talk. They become, they tell us too right. much stuff like, I get it. I listen, I love my cats. And if it's not that serious, you you do not take precedence over my cat Shelly, who's been around for 18 years. But I will uh, I will um compromise if someone's really uncomfortable, you know, and I care about them like that. Of course, I'll compromise. But he's giving lots of roadblocks, lots of reasons not to be married. So, anyways, we're gonna keep it moving. Hey Shannon. <laughs> All right. <laughs> a man claiming to be a journalist popped up at Cardi B's and Offset's home in an attempt to record outside of their premises. Take a look. No, Why are you doing it? Recording them. Why are you no, doing no, it? No, no, Why are you doing it? Stop. stop, Why stop. I, I, don't touch me, man. You're touching Why me. Why are you? I'm, I'm holding my you're hand in, my, in front of your camera. My, you're in my space. I'm holding my hand in front no, of your don't camera. Don't come up to me like I'm that. holding my hand in front of your I'm camera. I'm on a public okay. street. Okay. Come over but you filming this man's property. I'm filming all over. It don't matter. All right, what would you do if someone showed up at your residence and started recording? Wait a minute, Funky, did you do this before? And then, <laughs> and then, but I'm gonna tell you something. I had a little bit of I had a little bit of cool and decency with myself. Yes, I was reporting live from Sheree's house, but she did not live there yet. And I don't know if we could call it a house yet, because it was some sticks and stones and dirt. <laughs> All right. So I'm not like this person, and, and to be, and, and and I say that jokingly, but in all seriousness, had she lived there, I wouldn't have done it. Right. You know, you can be right and wrong at the same time. Um, legally, you got the right to be on a public street and to, to use your phone and to record anything you want. Um, but it's wrong. You know what I'm saying? And if he would have caught a beat down for doing it, it, it it's, I don't know, it, it, it's weird, right? Because it's kind of like, in Beverly Hills, they have whole tours of people who can get on buses and go take pictures of celebrities' houses. For whatever reason, we're fascinated as a culture with celebrity. Oh, that's where they live. Oh, let's get a picture. Oh, you know, let's see if they be in the yard playing. I get it. But then some of these fans, fake journalists, stands, they, they take things too far without realizing that people are human and they want privacy, safety, and security as well. So, uh, you know, I this guy just should be lucky he didn't get beat up. All right, Al, what would you do if someone did this to you? Mm, I, think, <clears throat> I think I would have to call the police. It's interesting because, 
you know, celebrities being followed or being stalked is nothing new. Claudia, you had a stalker. You talk about it a lot on this particular show. But let me tell you what's new that concerns me. It's the mental health of these new age stalkers. It's the mental health of these new age journalists. They just don't have any respect with boundaries, number one. And they also don't know how to manage conflict. So what happens is this could easily turn left to something physical. The guy across the street said, now, if I came and I punched you in the face, what would that cause, right? I just feel like he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Instead of being ornery about it, pack your shit up and move on. Come back. If you know that your rights, your rights say that you can be on a public street. However, you are in a private driveway filming a private home. So I understand the side of the law for that, too, sir. But, you know, I'm just like, mm, I don't know. I would rather be I, I like how the security guard handle it. I'd rather be safe than sorry, because you need to nip somebody like this in the bud real quick before they come back when your kids are around and they both have kids. That's what concerns me the most about stalking celebrities. So what would you do? I would call the police. Like I said, I would call the police for sure. Call you can't police. hit them. Um, I think, yeah. And then they, then they'd be like, they'd be like, they'd yeah, then they sue you. Right. Um, I, I think I, I would handle like they did. I would go confront them. Like, listen, yeah, you know, like you putting my safety at risk. Like you, you can be on the public street. Don't show my house and don't say who lives there. I think those public tours of celebrity homes are so jacked up in this world we live in. That is so not cool. You spend all this money for this house and then you got a bunch of people coming from wherever coming on a bus paying $4 to do this tour to see where you live. They can come back later on if they wanted to. No, 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 no. Damn. I paid $30 for my Hollywood Hills. Oh, you did it? <laughs> I did. I did. I, I'm corny like One that. One of them. <laughs> I, I did that and that I did tour. the TMZ. I did the TMZ bus too. So, <laughs> Al, a tourist. I know. All right. Now, get into the story. A woman recently had a meltdown on a flight and threatened to urinate on the plane. Check this out. Come on, you doing it? Sorry, everybody. Are you serious? I don't give no. I think you should go to Funky first. <laughs> it's so ghetto. Earth is so alien. Funky, what would you do with this old lady? Take her pants down after she wants to pee on the plane. <laughs> the sad part about it is it looked like it stank. Like, <laughs> listen, I told y'all a long time ago, you know how we go to TSA pre-check, you have to go for an interview. I'm telling y'all, we need to move to a place where people get psych exams before they're able to fly. I don't know what is going on lately with <laughs> shit. It's the stewardesses and the damn uh, uh, the, the passengers at this point. What would I do? We on an airplane, so I can't fight her. I don't know. I'd just be on there cussing her ass out. I'd be cussing her ass out something serious. Um, I would be filming just like this person did and show it to all my friends. That's what I, I honestly, if we're going to be real, I, I'm not, I'm not going to touch her, but I would film her and yeah, exploit Al. That's why I don't take flights that don't have first class. Is that happening underclass? <laughs> not me. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, what would I do? Honestly, I would follow through. So I would I would write a formal complaint to Southwest. If I don't know, that's Frontier. I'll write a formal complaint to Frontier and I would ask for her to be placed on a restricted list of flying and her privileges be restricted. Regina G Gwynn said she needs to be put under the jail. And Candace B said, that's how you get the, oh, I'm sorry, that was, that was old. Robin said, nobody in their right mind would even pull their pants down and pretend. You know, I want to make one point because, you know, there was a lot of people when we did the story a few weeks ago about the young lady, the gospel artist that got nominated for the Grammy and she wanted to stand up in the aisle and talk. Right. A lot of people get the minute you say Jesus and the Lord, they lose all logic. It's stuff like this why her standing up in the aisle to do whatever she was going to do was inappropriate because you never know what somebody is going to do when they start standing up in an aisle. 
Sit your ass down, everybody. Sit down. Kim White said she needs a psych evaluation ASAP. I, the only logic... I might go to the back of the plane. I, I'm just like, did they tell you you couldn't go to the bathroom or something? Is that why and, she did this? And she probably finna go to jail for indecent exposure. That right. part. Uh, Al Funky Jordan said, I know it smelled like old deer meat. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, That's my right. goodness. That's Originality. A good one. All right. Coming up next, Tiffany Haddish was arrested over the weekend, and later, millennials are yearning for more money. Stay tuned. What do you think the most bougie state in the United States is? Is this black bougie or white bougie? <laughs> There's a difference. McMillan and Mara. I'm not black bougie. I'm trying to be. <laughs> You're just bougie. I'm just too poor. <laughs> Every Thursday. Listen, if I had more money, I would be so bougie. You black bougie adjacent. All your friends are black bougie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> On Fox Soul. I'm in the same boat. <laughs> I'm, living, I'm living vicariously through them. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid, my kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping, maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Worried about your friend, but don't know how to reach out? You can say how are you or get a fake tattoo. You can ask with an app if it works for you. You can chat with them in VR. It's so good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Learn how you can help at org. TGIF. Lil Wayne was not pleased with the reveal of his wax figure. He tweeted, sorry, Wax Museum, but that bleep ain't me. Live and interactive. Brittany T said, that ain't Lil Weezy, that's Lil Asthma. <laughs> Hold on, call it. You, you gotta see what Poppy said. Hell, the wax figure looks cleaner and better than the real Lil Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> Serving up all the tea. You so messy, Q. You are. Nah. Join the chat on Fox Soul. Y'all yeah, don't make the comments. I just read them, honey. Oh, God. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, y'all, you know, we always hear we here at TGIF like to do things and share things with you to make your life a little bit easier and richer. Uh, this episode of TGIF is brought to you by Wild Grain. Wild Grain is the first ever bake from frozen subscription box for sourdough breads, fresh pastas, and artisanal pastries. Every item bakes from frozen in 25 minutes or less, and no thawing is required. The team at Wild Grain just sent me a new box with so much delicious stuff inside. Let me tell you about it. Look, I love to cook, and I like anything that helps my cooking experience to me impress my friends, and they have great things that taste really good. Uh, you know, my co-host been telling you about their love of their products as well. Um, Al, what was your favorite item? I know you had the peach pockets. You was really big on them. And then you went to the, cho was it chocolate? Apple pockets, then the chocolate pockets. <clears throat> I like all the pockets. I like all the pockets, extremely fresh, crispy, tastes good. But I'm also leaning in, Claudia and Q, into the sourdough bread. Like I really mm -hmm. forgot, it's a lot of work with that sourdough bread, but it is easy because you don't have to cook it. All you have to do is heat it. But that sourdough bread actually has come in really handy, especially over the holidays. So I'm now a big advocate for the sourdough bread. All right, Funky. Um, how is having wild grain in your freezer helpful when you are hosting something at your, at your house or you have a gentleman caller or well, you're you know a man? It's, your man? it's super helpful, but it's been causing issues lately because, like Al said, the sourdough is really good. I love the sourdough. All of my friends and family hear me talking about the croissants. And so when they come over now, they're like, throw some of them croissants on you always talking about. And I like to hoard my croissants. So I'm like, uh, y'all can have my croissants. Y'all can have some of this sourdough. Y'all can have some of these peach pockets. Y'all can have some of these apple pockets, but y'all cannot have my croissants. The croissants are just that good, y'all. So, um, you know, get into this wild grain. We've been talking about it for a while, but it is really good bread. 
All right. And you can now fully customize your wild grain box so you can get a common, any combination of breads, pastas, and pastries you like. Now, if you want a box of all bread, all pasta, or all pastries, you can have it. Plus, for a limited time, you can get $30 off the first box, plus free croissants that uh, Funky really likes in every box. When you go to wildgrain.com slash tea to start your subscription, you heard me, free croissants in every box and $30 off your first box. When you go to wildgrain.com slash tea, that's wildgrain.com slash tea, or you can use promo code T at checkout. Promotional consideration furnished by Wildgrain. All right, let's get back to the topics. Tiffany Haddish was arrested over the weekend due to driving under the influence. According to TMZ, police received several calls about someone slumped over uh, the steering wheel while the car was still running. Tiffany was taken to custody and released a short time later. What are your thoughts, Al? This is retarded. This is really dumb. Like, Tiffany Haddish knows that I love her. I support her. <laughs> but falling asleep at the wheel while, you know, while, you know, intoxicated, it doesn't make any sense. You're so wealthy. Like, it costs less to get an Uber or a driver than to go to court and have to hire a lawyer. So I don't understand. The best thing about it, though, let's find that. I guess I'll find the silver lining is no one got hurt. She didn't get hurt, and she has this knack for knowing how to put that car either in drive or keep her foot on the on the brakes until she wakes up. But in any case, it's so unnecessary, Tiffany. I think that whenever you feel like you're gonna drink too much, babe, just hire an Uber or hire a driver. It's like I said, it's cheaper than a lawyer in court fees. That's right. Funky, what are your thoughts? You know, it, it's it's just not cute. And considering the fact that Tiffany was arrested uh, in Atlanta previously for a DUI, I don't know if she has a drinking problem or not. But people can put these two things together and start to create this narrative about you that you have a drinking problem. Um, you know, my other question would be, where were your friends and who were you drinking with? Because we've all kind of been out. We've all kind of overconsumed. And then somebody says, yo, Claudia, you're out. Maybe you shouldn't drive. Leave your car. I'll take you. Ride with me. I'll drive you home. Al, follow me. We're going to take Claudia's car home. Mm -hmm. Something to that effect. Um, if your friends didn't do that for you, you don't have good friends. And if you got that drunk by yourself, then maybe you do have an alcoholic problem. But this is not cute. Um, because people die from people being drunk behind the wheel. And yeah, you know, you were asleep this time, but what if, you know, the next time you're not asleep and you're actually driving and you hurt somebody? I was wondering about that. Like, was the car in park? And did she like feel like I'm drunk? Let me pull over and go to sleep. And if that's the thing, I, I, I wasn't really sure about that. Um, it's clear Remember that- it happened in Atlanta too, Claudia. She yeah. was asleep. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking maybe when she goes to the light, maybe she puts it in park. Because if, cause if she's, if it's in park, right? Oh, at a light, yeah, at a light, I see that being a problem. But if you pull over, ain't right. that what you're supposed to do? No, but the keys can't be in the ignition. Oh, really? Oh, so yeah, that's right. In on. certain states, that's you right. Cannot be you in, can't in, have the heat on. Avoid, in order to avoid a DUI, the keys cannot be in the ignition or you can't be in the driver's seat. So I always said, if I got that damn drunk, I would just go lay down in the back. <laughs> you right, know, right. just go you know, lay down in the back. It's it's clear Tiffany's been going through something with with the you know that that case she had with Ari Spears and the breakup with Common and 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 I feel bad for her. And y'all are right. Like this is Tiffany had it. She's got the blonde hair, the mole. She's very recognizable. Even if she wasn't with her friends, like if I saw someone like that stumbling out of a club, I'd be like, yo, like I would probably jump in. Not that it's anyone else's responsibility, but damn, who were you with? Who were you with? And you don't have friends if they let you go. Like they're supposed to protect the quarterback, right? And wait, it was in the daytime, Claudia. Like when you see the TMZ footage, she's being, that, and that's the most embarrassing part. She's mm -hmm. actually in handcuffs 
being walked to the car. Nobody ever wants those images of them out. Why was you that drunk and the sun was still up, mama? <laughs> no, it was 5.45 a.m. The sun well, was coming up. Oh, the I sun mean, was I... coming. Oh, <laughs> well, oh, well, shit. Mama got it in. I thought that you love it. Everything in L.A. closed at what, two? They sure do at two, right? <laughs> oh, baby, mama got it in. Mama should have stayed wherever she was at. Mama had a dick appointment. She should have stayed right now. <laughs> All right. E. Harris said, I suspect she may have done this on purpose to get public sympathy. She will go to rehab next. I don't think this is done on I purpose don't think at all. No one wants this image. All right, keep it locked because coming up next, find out why millennials are seeking a salary increase. And later we are playing a fashionable game of hit or miss. Keep it locked. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. G-I-F. Jason Derulo is speaking out against sexual harassment claims. You see here before you deeply offended. Live and interactive. I agree with Miss Hollywood in the chat. She says he's reading a teleprompter. Listen, I know bad acting when I see it because I've done it. I'm deeply offended. <laughs> I'm going to give you Angela Bassett deeply offended. And I'm deeply offended. Oh. <laughs> and I'm deeply offended. Guilty. <laughs> On Fox Soul. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, y'all. According to a recent survey, reports show that millennials will need $525,000 to attain happiness. This is pretty much due to the economic instability, student loan, indebtedness, and the exorbitant um, expense of home ownership and the swiftly evolving labor market, which are all contributing elements to the current generation's yearning for a significant income. That's a lot of money. It's a cute, it's a cute check. All right. Do you agree with this increased need of salary? Go ahead, Q. You know, I, I love the millennials because they are just flipping the world on its head and the world just don't know what to do about it. I bet Whoopi Gober is somewhere having a fit right now. Wow. And normally I rock with a lot of the progressive stuff, but a half a million dollars, y'all, that's a lot of damn money. I don't know how many companies, first of all, with everything being automated these days, mofos better just be lucky there is an available job. And of the jobs that will pay that much money, um, they're going to be few far and in between. You know, flight attendants ain't going to be making a, a million dollars. Now, if they're saying this is going to be a joint income between two people, then that is very feasible. Um, but all in all, I'm not mad with the millennials. We, we are not our ancestors. We are not our parents. And folks are saying, shit, they want more out of life. Folks are saying they don't want to damn be regular, hardworking, blue-collar people. Everybody want to be fabulous. Everybody wants to be a real housewife of whatever city they live in. And they feel like they deserve it. And I think they do, too. <laughs> Just good luck, good luck getting someone to pay you that much. But, hey, you can try 
Lynette eight said 525 K is crazy. I'll take $200,000 a year. Al, what do you think? Um, Q, you're a millennial. Millennials is from the age of 27 to 42, right? You're on yeah, the but I'm a geriatric millennial. <laughs> you're, you're on the old end of that spectrum. Mm -hmm. huh? I think, you know, it speaks to, it, I think it really speaks to the mental state of these, these millennials. It's, it's very unrealistic in my opinion. I, I think it, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, and the other thing is, if you want that, you have to work for it. And considering you guys only want to work three days a week, how are you going to get it? I mean, how are all of you going to get it? You don't want to work for it, so how are you all going to get it? That would be my first question. And the second question is, I think they need to recalibrate their expectations because $500,000 is a half a million dollars. What's that, guys? That's $50,000 a month. Like, are you really working for $50,000 a month? What are you doing at the age of 27 that you are earning $50,000 from anyone? Showing um, your pussy on OnlyFans <laughs> or selling it at the club. <laughs> hey, I, I am not mad at them wanting that money. I'm not mad at them. But what I am mad at, the lack of willingness to do what it takes to get it. Get it, yeah. I, listen. But I, get, I get it. We don't have to, you know, work like our ancestors did. And we should have a softer life. I think it should get easier for every generation. But I think look, I'm going to go ahead and say I blame participation trophies and them ribbons. You know, you are uh, if you you in sports, Al, uh, uh, you know, first place is blue. Yeah. Second place you get a is white red, one for just coming out. Third, pla third place is white. <laughs> and then after that, you get them other colors, pink, purple, green. Like, what the hell is that? We started making everyone feel like, well, you're a winner too, and you deserve it too. Even if you don't work as hard as the winners, you should feel included too. And we should let make you feel left out because that would be wrong. That made it like, well, why should, why are we working so hard? I feel like, yo, you should make more money. You should have a soft life, but you should also not be afraid to work for it. It should not be slave wages. Let's be clear, these corporations are really getting away with a whole lot by the corp the head of the company making a hundred to a thousand times more than the employees. That's not right. But listen, you can have that money, but you can't have that money and work one like one minute a day, like they want to uh, do some of them. Yes, All you right. can, millennial. Don't let the, don't let the people trick y'all, bitch. Because I come to work. One hour a day for Fox <laughs> I might do one hour every other day of YouTube. And life is good over here. You can have anything you want. Okay. And, and, and But you know what? Real talk, that's the problem. Part of the problem, Claudia. And now mm -hmm. they're looking at people on social media. They're, they're looking at right. influencers, people who are making this, that type of money. You know what I'm saying? They're looking at people who own boutiques and they're looking at the the, the 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 instagram models and stuff and they're like shit she 20 just like me if she could make it it's possible i want it too mm. that's true so you're part of the problem <laughs> yeah the only difference oh. is I, for me it's not aspirational it's been achieved but going to the next thing <laughs> <laughs> and, and and also that's also rare you know yeah, like people yeah. gotta think it's it's not common like you beat the odds yeah that's not commonplace it's not like it, you you, you yeah. won the lottery yeah everybody's not gonna be a youtuber and make it <laughs> that, there's a lot of struggling ones out there ain't there mm -hmm. all right tiny and uh ti's son king got into it first of all production why why y'all use that picture? You know I'm not mature not enough for, for this conversation. <laughs> like you know, you know who you're dealing with on this panel. You know <laughs> who is on this panel and you put that picture. I know there was other pictures y'all could have used, but I'm gonna go ahead and not look at the left side of my screen. I'm gonna read the prompter and not I'm gonna stick I'm gonna be professional. Tiny and TI son King got into a heated argument with his parents at yesterday's Falcons game. Take a look. You want to hide it for the world? I'm going to put it out there for them to see. Uh, amen. I, I want to put up nowhere. You ain't had me put up nowhere. Like, I ain't, you ain't had me behind the mansion. I was outside doing what I wanted to do. Based on the clip, it seems like King was upset about his parents calling him spoiled, implying that he grew up with a silver spoon, which I would love to have grown up with a silver spoon. Seems like King really wants that, that street cred. What are your thoughts on this situation? Alex, go to you first. You know, there are two things here. One is, 
King, <laughs> I just want to know, what is he thinking, saying that he didn't grow up privileged with his family? Whether you stay with them or not, you are now sitting in a $30,000 suite, the guests of the National Football League and the Atlanta Falcons. You're allowed access to the field where you scream some obscenities there as well. If that ain't privilege, son, then I don't know what is. Now, on the other side of that, I got to be 110% honest, guys. Every time I see and hear King say something towards his family, I get more and more concerned. Is there something that happened to King that we don't know about? Is there something that he went through as a child that we're not privy to? Because this has gotten deep now. I mean, it's deep to the point where it's either extremely awkward or the boys telling the truth. So my question is, if we, if, if T.I. and Tiny didn't silence King, what would he actually tell us about his parents? Because there is trauma written all over this young man. There is also like pain written all over this young man, the way that he's acting out and the things that he's saying. And at this point, I need answers because this ain't working the way that it's presented to the rest of the public. Funky, what are your thoughts? You know what, to Al's point, uh, I see the pain and the trauma too. Um, I'm not entertained when I see King. Um, I'm, I'm disappointed. Um, and I could imagine the slaves are turning over in their graves. Can you imagine your parents doing everything possible to get you and move the family out of the hood? And all you want to do is be from the hood. It's just so bewildering to me. And I think the bigger conversation or the more evolved conversation that we need to be having is that why is it that even when they're not from the streets that our black young men are so attracted to it right and why is it such a rites of passage and why are we so turned on by the notion of being from the streets a part of a gang or toting a gun or moving bricks why are we so turned on why is our manhood tied to these types of things. Like I, I really want us to somebody to dig into the deeper psychology of the young black man and his infatuation with the streets. I hate it too. You know, like I, I talked about that today on the breakfast club about how his parents, you have two superstar parents that provided you with everything. You even a TV show, even relevancy, even fame. I wonder if, if he resents his parents' fame because he really wants that. He really wants to make a lane for himself. And he doesn't get that respect on his own. So maybe there's a little bit of jealousy and resentment. Oh, listen, mothers and fathers can be jealous of their kids and kids can be jealous of their parents. It goes both ways. I I, I don't, I haven't heard of any bad parenting with him, I, but we I'm not in the house. But I, I hated to see this, like fighting for street credibility. I love being, listen, people, people that are really from the hood, they don't glamorize it. They kind of want to get out if you really had to deal with the real struggles and the hurtful things that go down in the hood it's not a thing to be glamorizing we got to get lives together just like when we we equate being intelligent with whiteness you know like we got to stop that like we it's okay to like what's wrong Al? what's going on we got to get your the internet together <laughs> Oh Lord, it's my you just freeze it a little bit. Go ahead, baby. I'm so gonna... it just follows me wherever I go. You know, let me wrap this up. King, it ain't a good big deal to be from the hood and be happy you weren't there. And kick yeah, knock it off. All right, coming up, we are playing a fastball game of uh -huh. hit or miss. Stick around, we'll be right back. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you and we'll figure it out. What do you think the most bougie state in the United States is? Is this black bougie or white bougie? <laughs> There's a the difference. McMillan and Mara. I'm not black bougie. I'm trying to be. <laughs> You're just bougie. I'm just too poor. <laughs> Every Thursday. Listen, if I had more money, I would be so bougie. You black bougie adjacent. All your friends are black bougie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> On Fox Soul.
I'm in the same boat. <laughs> I'm, living, I'm living vicariously through them. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Welcome back. All right, the celebs are styling and profiling at the premiere of Beyonce's Renaissance film. So it's only right that we play a fashionable game of hit or miss. All right, let's cue the music. All right, so first up, we have Marcy. And we got Marsai Martin and Al, you know, I'm going to say this, I am loving her fit. One thing I love about Marsai is that she's always dressed age appropriately. Right. I love the fact that as she's getting older, she didn't do what a lot of people do and say, let me start being slutty. She just, you know, upped it with class. It's a hit. I'm going to give her a hit too, Q. I love her silhouette. I love the train. I love the shoulders. I love how it's a deep plunge on around the chest area. And her skin is skinning and her hair is hair. And I'm going to definitely give her a hit. Definitely a hit. She looks good. That dress is banging. She's from Texas. And I love how she's evolving. And she's a boss. Next up, we have Janelle Monet. Hit or miss? It's a hit. It's consistent with the Janelle Monet brand. I, I like it. I'm going to give her a hit, too, um, because, you know, the last couple of times she's been on the carpet, I don't know what she's been thinking. I'm glad that she's back doing what she normally does, and that's giving us fashion at what they call the highest level. It's a hit. Hit for me, but only she could pull this off. Anybody else, I'd say miss, but for her, it fits and it works. How about uh, Wendy Harlow? Was this a hit or a miss? Total miss. It's a total miss. It looks like trash bag realness. I don't like it at all. Uh, oh, coming from a supermodel, I would have thought more. I'm going to give her a miss on this as well. Something about this just didn't come together the way I thought it should and could. I'm going to give her a miss on this. I agree. Miss for me. All right, Tyler Perry, hit or miss? This is a hit. You know, I, I always say this, men's fashion is very boring. So the fact that he was able to actually squeeze out a little style with the few options that we do have, it's a hit for Tyler. I think the yeah. only thing that's a hit on that is probably that diamond necklace that he has hanging around his neck. Other than that, it seemed very lazy, and I knew I had to come out and do this. I'm going to give him a miss on this. I'm going to give him a hit because I like seeing him like this, like a little more relaxed, but he looks. I think he looks good dressed like this. I like him better like this than in suits, actually. Mm -hmm. All right, Laverne Cox, hit or miss? Oh, you know, I hate Peblum. Um, but it, it, it I'll give her a hit. It 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 it's costumey. It looks good on her. her. Her body definitely is made for what she has on. I'll give her a hit. I'm gonna give her a hit, but I would have liked to have seen a different color top or a different color bottom. Her body is body and everything else looks good though. So I'll give her a hit this time. I, I think the color isn't like the the silver kind of the theme with whole the whole Beyonce thing. And that's why she did that. Yeah, but what's that top? Is that baby blue? Like a light blue. I I I think she looks good, and the body looks amazing. That waist is snatched. I usually don't like them little peplum things either, but she looks good. All right, next we have Latavia. Hit or miss? How she got there? <laughs> definitely a hit. Hey, Latavia, that's my friend. It's definitely a hit. She look good. Um, I don't know if I would give her a hit. Something just doesn't seem to be working out for me. Um. Yeah, I'm going to have to pass on that one. I'm going to give her a miss. Okay. Last but not least, Michelle Williams. Hit or miss? 
Michelle Williams. I don't, I don't like it. I don't, it's too much going on at the bottom. Is that an afro at the bottom of her of her knees or something? That looks almost like an afro. That's definitely a miss, and definitely for a miss for like, was this a premiere Renaissance tour? The movie, she's doing a whole lot. I like it for her. I, I reposted her on my page. I think she looks she looks the best I've seen her look, especially her hair and makeup. All right, I want to say thank you to Funky Dineva and Al Reynolds for doing that thing. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Make sure you stay tuned for Fox Soul Face Off. They be getting it in and they be checking the hell out of each other. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye, Soulmates. Bye, Al. Bye, Funky. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night. And throw away them damn Thanksgiving leftovers. It's time to throw that damn food. Tonight is the they last. Got a couple of days, love. <laughs>